Hey everybody, this is Matt with MattsMath.com. Thanks for joining us here today as we talk about how to find the surface area of cylinders. We're in the Math Common Core Standard of Geometry and we're going to be creating and describing shapes today and especially dealing with surface area of cylinders. Okay. Our guiding question, what's going to guide us today, is how can you find the surface area of a cylinder? You're going to be able to answer that question by the end of the lesson today, alright? Alright, how many times have you ever been sitting there thinking about how much cardboard does it take to make a toilet paper roll? You know, I think about it all the time. Well, you know what? That is the surface area of a cylinder. If you think about a toilet paper roll, cut it in half, you get a rectangle with two circles, one on top, one on bottom, and bam, that is your surface area of a cylinder. Ready to find it out? I know you're ready to get that question answered. All right, but let's talk about this first. Let's talk about the perimeter and area of a circle. Now, before we take part in pulling this toilet paper, right, toilet paper roll apart, let's remember a few things about circles, okay? Now, circumference. Circumference. You want to write that word down if you don't know what it is, okay? Circumference merely is the perimeter of a circle, okay? And the way that we find it, we write as a C, we do 2 times pi. If you don't remember what pi is, it's 3.14. And then we multiply it by the radius. Okay, so the radius here is 5, so what we would do is we take 2, multiply by 5, and then multiply by 3.14. Okay. Or, simply put, you could put pi times the diameter. If you think about what 2 times r is, 2 radius, 2 radii is, bam, 10, or the diameter, okay? So the circumference is merely the perimeter of a circle, and you're going to need to memorize this. This is the formula that you're going to be using quite often today, okay? All right, there it is. So that would give you your answer, okay? Now, the area of a circle, a little bit different. The area of the circle is the space inside the circumference. So here's the circumference around the circle. The radius hasn't changed. It's 5, and it's the space in there, okay? And what I like to say is the area of a circle is pi r squared. Pi r not round. Wait a minute. Pi r round. No, but that's the joke. Pi r squared, all right? So to find the area of the circle, it's pi r squared. Or if you're given the diameter, take half of it and then square it. Okay, take half of the diameter then square it. So for here, what, we'll do, what we do, we work with PEMDAS, 5 squared first, so 25 times pi. And that's it. Or here, if you have the diameter, half of it, 5 times itself and times pi. That's it, okay? So let's find the circumference here. Radius is 7 in the first example. Diameter is 15 in the next. Here we go. So all you're doing, taking 2 times pi, 3.14, times 7. And bam, that's your answer, 43.96, about 44 meters. Here's this one. You've given the diameter at first, finding the circumference. It's just pi times 15, okay? Pretty easy, 47, about 47. All right, now we're going to find the area. We're given the radius in the first, then diameter in the second. So let's do it. Seven yards here. Remember, it's pi, 3.14, squared. Seven pi r squared. Seven squared. 3.14 times the radius squared gives you about 154 square yards. Now remember, this is area, so we're squaring the measurements, okay? All right, why don't you try to do this one? You're given the diameter, so you've got to make sure you half it. All right, half of the diameter is 3, so then it's 3.14 times 9, or 3 squared, which is about 28 square centimeters. All right, now let's get on to the good part. All right, so let's look at a cylinder now. We're going to take it apart, we're going to unwrap it, and we're going to find the surface area of the shape. So here's what happens when you have the surface area of a shape. If uh, you have a cylinder, you cut it open, bam, take a slice on it, and what opens up other than, other than a rectangle and then you have a circle on top and the circle for the bottom, okay? The rectangle is what's called the lateral sides. Remember that from last time. Lateral sides here. The base is there and there, okay? Now, if you think about it, if this is a toilet paper roll or uh, a paper towel roll, if you were to take a piece off of that, what shape is it? Well, it's usually a rectangle or a square, right? Paper towel, paper towels are square or rectangular. All right, and here's our formula. Now, notice this is the formula that we learned last time for prisms, okay? Same goes for cylinders, except the measurements or the units are a little different, okay? So, again, it's two times the area of the base because you've got the top and the bottom. And then the perimeter of a circle, remember what the perimeter is called? 
It's called the circumference. Okay? And then h, again, is the distance between the bases. Now, if we do some finagling here, and we move things around, 2 times the area plus c, remember the circumference, times h. And then what is the perimeter of a circle, or the area of a circle? None other than pi r squared. Remember, pi r squared, not round. So it's 2 pi r squared plus circumference, which is 2 pi r, h. Or then we can do a little bit of math magic here and pull out the 2 pi r, put it on the outside, and it becomes 2 pi r times the quantity of r plus h. Right? Well, what is 2 pi r? None other than the circumference. So the surface area formula is pretty simple. It's the circumference of the circle times the radius added to the height. Okay? And that's it. If you want to use this, this is the formula I'm going to be using now throughout the lesson just because that is what we've been using. If you want to memorize this easier formula, do it. It's much easier, okay? But I want to stick with this simple formula that we can use for each, both prisms and for cylinders, okay? I'd rather give you one equation that works for both, or one formula, than give you more than one, okay? That's my preference. So there it is. Okay, so notice again, we've got the shape here, the circumference is all of the perimeter, all the way around. A is the area and H is the height of the prism. So let's find that. Let's find the surface area of this guy. Our height of the prism is 10. Our radius is 4. We get to plug it in here. All right. Remember, you can use this formula if you want. You can use this formula. This is the one I've used. So you've got to find the area of that base. It's 4 squared times pi times 2 plus 2 times pi times 4. This is circumference, or the perimeter, of that circle times the height. And you'll get 357 point, or 351.7. Or if you want to just take the pi out and add the pi at the end, you can do that. And you can write it simply as 112 pi square meters. And the reason why we do this is because I know you guys know how to multiply by 3.14, right? But if you want to do it without using a calculator or without doing some long multiplication, you would just write the answer as 1 point, or 112 pi, and that's it. Okay? So there it is. Now, once you do this one on your own, okay? You've got 9 feet is the radius, 6 feet is the height. Tell me, what is the surface area? All right, how you doing? You figure out which formula you're using? If you're having trouble, definitely use that circumference times the radius plus the height formula. That's going to be your easiest and safest bet, okay? All right, here it is. 270 pi, or 847.8 meters squared. All right. Now, just to find the lateral surface area, you don't have to add the bases in there, okay? Sometimes you might be asked to find the lateral surface area. And all that is, is like the paper towel, the actual paper towel, or the piece of toilet paper that's there. That's called the lateral surface area. It doesn't include the bases here. Imagine it being a hollow tube, all right? And the formula for that is simply just the perimeter or the circumference times the height. The perimeter or the circumference times the height. So it's 2 pi times 3 times 8, or 48 pi, or 150.72. All right, why don't you find the lateral surface area of this guy? Remember, it doesn't include the top and the bottom, the two bases, okay? Here it is. 56 pi, or 175.8. All right. Well, how much paper is used in a label for the can of cat food? You want to go buy your cat some food? All right, and I want you to think about how much paper is actually going to use. Now, remember, with cans of cat food, they usually don't cover the top, okay? So this is just lateral surface area, so you're not worrying about the bases, okay? And round it to the nearest whole number. All right, the circumference of a base of a cylinder is 33.3 .3 inches, and the height of the cylinder is 7.7. .7. What's the surface area of the cylinder? You might want to draw it out. And you are going to have to work backwards with 33.3. .3. If you're given 33.3 .3 and that's the circumference, you definitely want to make sure that you know that 2 pi r equals 33.3. .3. So what you got to do is divide by 2 pi and divide this by 2 pi. And that would give you the radius, okay? So you want to work backwards here. And then you're going to use the radius to find the surface area. You already have the circumference, so remember you have to find the circumference. And that's no big deal.
All right. Hearing answers. All right, how you doing? Dealing with circles? Pretty good, huh? Can you answer this question of how you can find the surface area of a cylinder now? Using one of the formulas? I bet you can. And I know that you are ready to be done because we have answered your lifelong question of how to find the surface area of a toilet paper roll. All right. Well, this is Matt with MathsMath.com. Thanks for joining us here today. Uh, check us out on Facebook at Solving Math's Problems and on Twitter, Matt's Math. And enjoy math.